The gravitational force between two objects of masses little m and capital M placed at a distance r apart is proportional to their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. That is, f is a proportional to capital M times little m divided by r squared. Determine the height and the linear velocity of a satellite that, when placed, when placed in orbit, that should be placed, when placed in orbit, will rotate around the Earth once a day. Take g equal to 9.8 meters per second squared and r, which is the radius of the Earth, as 6,400 kilometers. So I'm told that f is proportional to capital M, little m, divided by r squared. So to make a proportionality into an equality, I multiply by a constant, kmm, divided by r squared. Now, I have my Earth, let's get a diagram. I have the Earth, and here I have some satellite, which is a, r units from the center of the Earth. So this is little r units from the center of the Earth, and of course from here to here, that is the Earth's surface, from the center of the Earth to the Earth's surface, is capital R, which I'm also told its value. So, I have this. Now, I want to somehow eliminate some of these variables. What do I know? I know that at the Earth's surface, or very close to the Earth's surface, let's say close to the Earth's surface, What do I know about the value of the force? I know that, well, the radius is equal to r, but the force is equal to mg, mass times acceleration, gravitational acceleration. So, therefore, I can say that mg equals k, capital M, little m, divided by r squared, but r is now capital R. Now, I can cancel the little m with the little m, I can multiply by r squared, r squared g equals km, and now I have an expression for k times capital M, which I can substitute into this formula here. So I can say, therefore, f equals little g r squared, little m, divided by, uh, that should be little r squared. Great. But what is this force? This force is the force that's required to keep this satellite going in a circular motion, in a circular orbit around the Earth. Now we know what a circular, a force which keeps something going in a circular direct motion is called. That's called a centripetal force. So I can say that this is a centripetal force. So it's a resultant force. The physical force is the force of gravity but the resultant force is a centripetal force. And that's the centripetal force which keeps the satellite in orbit. So what can I say now? I can say that, well, mg r squared divided by r, which is this, is equal to the expression for a centripetal force, which we've seen in previous videos. So that's m omega squared r. That should be a squared here as well. m omega squared r. And now let's do a bit of cancelling and rearranging. So I can get rid of these m's. I can get an expression for little r. r cubed equals g r squared divided by omega squared. Why am I looking for little r? Because I'm trying to determine the height, which is here in the question, determining the height. Okay. Now, I know what g is. I'm given that. It's 9.8. I know what capital R is, that's the radius of the Earth, which is approximately 6,400 kilometers. I'm given that as well. But what about omega? So, omega, well, what's omega? Omega is the angular velocity. And how do I work out the angular velocity? Well, the angular velocity is the angular displacement divided by time, which is analogous to the linear case. Velocity, or speed, is equal to distance over time. So, what is the angular displacement of this uh, satellite as it moves in a circle. Well, clearly it's just two pi radians, because we're moving in one complete circle 
one complete revolution is 2 pi radians. So it's 2 pi divided by the time. Now, what's the time? Well, let's read the question again. Determine the height and linear velocity of a satellite that, when placed in orbit, will rotate around the Earth once a day. So I want to complete this revolution in exactly one day. So that would mean 24 hours. But I don't want to work with hours, I'd like to work with seconds because that's what my unit for gravity is. So 24 hours would be 24 times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. And what's that equal to? I've worked it out previously, let me see, 7.3 times 10 to the negative 5 radians per second. Great, so now I can substitute that value into here and work out what r is. So r is going to be the cube root of subbing in g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, if this is meters per second squared, I need my capital R, I need my radius in meters as well. I'm given it in kilometers, so all I have to do is multiply by 1,000. So 6400 multiplied by 10 to the 3, which is 1,000 squared, divided by my omega, so 7.3 times 10 to the negative 5 squared. And that should give me a value of, let's see, where have I written it down? So 4.22 times 10 to the 7 meters. And if you're following along, just check on your calculators that I haven't typed in something wrong. So I have this in meters. Oh, that's not omega, that's R. So that is the distance from the center of the Earth. Remember, from this small diagram, we said that little r was the distance from the center of the Earth to the satellite. Now, that's nice, but let's work out what the height is. When we refer to height, we're talking obviously from the center of the, uh, not the center of the Earth, we're talking from the surface of the Earth, because clearly we're standing on the surface of the Earth. So, therefore, the height required would be given by this expression, which is, if I converted this to kilometers, would be 4.22 times 10 to the 4, kilometers minus the radius of the earth which is 6400 kilometers which is about let's see 35800 zero, zero kilometers above well, you couldn't see 35800 kilometers above the surface of the earth so that's the height required to have a an orbit around the earth of period or time to take or time taken rather of one day now the last bit to do in this question is to work out the linear velocity of the satellite so the expression for the linear velocity is given by v equals uh, can we see that v equals r omega now what is r r is given as 4.22 well, not given, we worked it out to be 4.22 times 10 to the 7 meters. And for our omega, that was 7. Point, this pen's starting to die. 7.3 times 10 to the negative 5 radians per second. All right, now if I punch that into my calculator, I'll get about 3,081 meters per second, which is also approximately equal to, to just give you a feel of how fast this is, three kilometers per second all right so that's really fast that's the speed that's required the linear speed to keep a satellite orbiting around the earth with a period of one day for one complete revolution so that is pretty quick